all these electric bikes need to be plugged in in order to charge, but a lot of people ask about solar charging. Is it practical? Is it doable? And I have seen varying answers out there on the internet. Some people saying flat out that it just doesn't work at all, which is absolutely not true. So let's head outside. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to solar charge your e-bike, tell you the ins and outs. Is it practical? Is it easy? Is it efficient? Is it affordable? One is the setup I'm using on my trike. I have a foldable solar panel here from Powerfilm Solar. I bought that, I paid for that. They're not sponsoring anything in this video. My charge controllers are from Genesun, also not sponsored. And this is a very, very efficient, lightweight setup, but a little more complex to set up and kind of a lot more expensive. But let me start with what I would say is the easiest way to solar charge your bike. This is a battery bank. This particular one is from Egratech. There are all sorts of brands and different styles you can get, but I'm gonna show you this one because Egratech is sponsoring this video. They sent me not only this battery, but this, a foldable solar panel that plugs right into it. I say this is the easiest way because I don't have to make anything custom to make this work. I can just buy this stuff from their website or on Amazon and just plug everything in. Now, one thing I have to caution you about, I see people asking about different types of battery banks like this all the time online and people saying they'll be great for charging an e-bike and some of them are absolutely the wrong choice. And the reason is the watt hour, the capacity of the battery bank. You always have to look at the capacity of the battery bank. This one is 900 and 99 watt hours, which means in theory, as long as our e-bike battery is less than 999 watt hours, we should be able to get a full charge even if we don't have the solar panel plugged in. Now you do have to account for some efficiency losses. I'll get into that a little bit later. But like I said, this is the easy setup. So here is the e-bike charger that comes with a snap cycle bike. All I need to do is turn the battery bank on. It's a little hard to see this screen out in the sun, but it's showing 96%. So I plugged it in, I've got my red light on the charger and my battery's charging. So if I just let this do its thing, it's going to drain this battery down, but charge up my e-bike battery. Now you don't have to charge this thing solely on solar. You can just plug this into a 110 outlet when you're at home, give it a full charge, and then just carry it around with you in your car while you're camping. If you wanted to recharge your bike out on the road and just haul this on your bike, I mean, you could, but it's not the greatest solution for that because it's kind of big and heavy and you'd probably be better off just buying a second battery for the bike itself. That to me would make a lot more sense, but yes, you could do this. So let's take a look at this solar panel. I have not opened this up yet, but this is a very, nice case they've included here. So we've got our connectors that are gonna plug in somewhere on here. Ooh, I think this is to like prop it up. So this is a 17 and a half volt panel, 100 watts maximum. So to put that into perspective, this charger is 54.6 volt output at three amp. In case those numbers sound confusing, that means this charger is about 150 watts or so being plugged straight into the wall. If you've got a two amp charger, which is what a lot of e-bikes come with, that's about 100 watts. So roughly equivalent to this solar panel in full sun. Yeah, it tells me actually on the screen here that it's drawing 162 watts. So if I plug this panel in, then it should still be draining down, but it's gonna be handling basically about two thirds of the power draw. And then once the battery's done charging, this panel is gonna slowly charge our battery back up. So the panel has some small legs behind it, so you can kind of prop it up for maximum exposure. A little lid right here, we just pop that open with our solar inputs using a pretty standard XT60 connector. And that is all there is to it. Our solar panel is set up, charging our battery bank, 
and then charging the bike. No special wiring, no funny connectors. So the advantages of a system like this from Egratech, it's all 100% plug and play for whatever e-bike you have. You just need to use the charger that came with your bike. So this is definitely the way to go for ease of use. For cost, this is gonna be one of the more affordable setups. And the other advantage is the fact that you're not relying 100% on the panels. Let's say this gets covered by shade. Like right now I'm blocking half of the panel. That means I'm only gonna get like 50 watts. Well, if you were relying solely on that, that means I just cut my input going into the bike down to 50 watts or so. So it's gonna charge a lot slower. But because we have the battery bank in the middle here, the solar panel is just trickle charging the battery. The battery is actually charging our other battery. We're not gonna lose any charge time at all. It's gonna charge very quickly. The same as if you plugged it into the wall until that battery is dead. Once again, thanks to Egratech for sending me this complete setup. As you can see, it's working quite well. Our battery's getting charged up, still working on it there, and really easy to do. I'll put a link for those guys in the description. But there is one downside to this particular setup. Well, maybe there's two downsides compared to what I'm gonna show you. One, you have this big extra battery you gotta take with you. If you wanna take this setup on your bike, it's not very practical. What if you could eliminate the battery and just go straight from the panel to the bike? Two, and to me, this is the bigger problem, this setup is terribly inefficient from an electrical perspective. Now, solar is not the most efficient way to capture energy, but once you have the equipment, it's kind of like it's free, so it's still worth it. Now, if we could capture 100% of the sun's energy, that would be absolutely amazing. But even the best solar panels are a little over 20 some percent. I don't know exactly which cells are being used here. If I can find that, I'll put that on screen here. But here's what we're doing. We're taking the theoretical 100 watts maximum. That 100 watts is produced as DC power. And that is going into this. Now there is a charge controller that is taking the input from the solar panel and charging this. It actually says on the bottom here what this is. 37 volts on it. It's capable of 1200 watts. That's actually quite a large output power. We're taking DC power from the panel. We're bumping that up to the proper voltage here. Now we are going to lose a small percentage converting whatever voltage we're getting here into the voltage needed to charge this battery. That's gonna be minimal. It could very easily be like 95% efficient, possibly, depending on what kind of charge controller they're using. But then we have to take the 36 volt DC power and convert it into something the bike can use. Unfortunately, bikes are designed to charge off of a 110 volt or 220 volt outlet. And that is not DC power, that is AC. So we have a DC power to AC conversion happening, and that is not an efficient process. We lose a substantial amount of electricity when we convert the 37 volts that are in here up to the 110 volt AC power we needed here. And then we gotta do that process over again because we have to convert the 110 volt AC power in our bike charger down to the proper 54 volt DC power we need to charge the battery. So we're losing a little bit of power from the panel to this battery. We're losing a big chunk of power going from this DC battery to this 110 volt output. And then we're losing another chunk going from AC back to DC. But wouldn't it make more sense just to go from DC power to DC power? And the answer to that is, of course. Is that easy? Not particularly. Is it cheap? From my experience, no. Is it lighter? Yes. Is it more efficient? Yes. So if you just want something you can buy that works, go to Egratech, buy one of these. It's gonna do exactly what you need it to do. It's gonna be convenient. As long as you don't physically need to carry the battery back up on your bike, I think this is a great setup and it's gonna work 
for other devices too. You've got multiple 110 outlets. You have USB ports on the front, USB-A type, USB-C type. You have a 12 volt output. So you can charge your cell phone on this, which speaking of which even has a wireless charging pad on the top, that's super cool. There's a light on the front of it. But if you're a DIY person or you obsess about lightweight or you obsess about efficiency like I do, then let me show you an alternative. So here's the power film solar panel that I've got. Now you could use the Egertech solar panel with this charge controller. Just to be clear, you do not need a solar panel as expensive as this one, because this was not cheap. But this one is very compact and very light. It does just lay out flat. It doesn't have the fancy little props like the Egertech does. I've got a nice long cord that I have hooked up a XT60 connector to. And basically what's happening here is I'm plugging, I'm plugging my solar panel directly into one of these Genesun controllers. This is a charge controller. So we're taking DC power from the panel and going directly to DC power on the battery. There's no AC to DC transforming going back and forth. So it's far more efficient. I would be surprised if we're getting 50% efficiency out of a setup with a battery bank just because of how e-bike chargers work. In this scenario, we're not using an e-bike charger at all. We're bypassing it completely. Genesun makes charge controllers specifically for lithium batteries. Now the disadvantage of course of that is cost. These charge controllers run like $250, which is expensive and it has to be for the voltage your battery is. So these are 36 volt batteries. I've wired them in series, so this is really a 72 volt trike, but they're 36 volts specifically so I can have solar charging, which means I need a 36 volt charge controller. So this charge controller will only work on 36 volt batteries. If I have another 48 volt bike, I'd have to buy another. That does. Mike's e-bikes maintenance and repair. That was funny. Anyway, um, where was I? So if I had a 48 volt bike, I would have to buy another charge controller for that bike. If I had a 52 volt, I'd have to buy another charge controller for that bike. So you can see how this would get very expensive very fast using a setup like the Eager Tech system. You don't have to do that. So I'm gonna unplug my little cap right here so I can plug this panel right in here and that is going directly to this charge controller. Takes a minute to kind of wake up there. Now I have a little light blink that's happening every once in a while. There we go. It is awake. Hopefully you can see that blinking now that I get in super close. So just to recap, I'm going from solar panel to charge controller directly to battery, DC, through the entire range. And these things are super efficient. We're talking like 96% efficient, sometimes more. So to put that into perspective, let's say these panels were equivalent. We're getting 100 watts out of each of them. If this is only 50% efficient, I'm only actually getting 50% of my sun power to the battery. 50 watts is all that's actually getting there. With this setup, I'd be getting closer to 96 watts, almost double to the battery. So you can see why I prefer this setup in certain scenarios. It's so much more efficient. And the reason I have this trike set up this way is because I intend on having a body that is covered in solar panels when this is complete. So this can charge from the sun even while I'm riding. I don't have to stop and fold out a solar panel. So for that reason, this setup makes way more sense. But the panels are going to be a extraordinarily expensive. The charge controllers are expensive. I have two of them, one for each battery, so that's $500 in charge controllers alone, but it is the most efficient way to do this. Once this is all said and done, I hope to have about 500 watts of solar panels on the top of this body. Yeah, that's a lot of panels, like three times the amount that's right here covered on top of this thing, but I think there's enough surface area to make that work, which means that sitting in the sun, this is gonna charge faster than just being plugged into a normal wall outlet with your typical e-bike charger. Now, the other thing I didn't mention is, uh, I said it's more difficult. 
these Genesun controllers, they don't come with e-bike connectors. They just come with bare connectors. You have to solder or crimp your own connections onto these. So this is a very DIY setup. Now, if you want something like this, I am actually a dealer for Janison. I can order their controllers. We can modify them in-house, put the connectors you want on for a fee, of course, and set you up with a super efficient solar setup if you want that, but you gotta be prepared to pay some extra money for that. So my conclusion is solar charging. Does it work? Absolutely. There's no reason you cannot solar charge your bike as long as you have some decent sun, which thankfully we do today. If you wanna keep it simple, you wanna keep it easy, you wanna keep it affordable, check out Egratech. Again, they sell both the battery banks. They have a bunch of different sizes. They have solar panels. They come with all the right connectors to just plug everything in. No custom wiring. It's really, really simple. If you wanna go for the expensive high-tech DIY setup, uh, we can probably help you with that too.